First of all, we need to understand what the word axiom really means. 1. A self-evident truth that requires no proof. 2. A universally accepted principle or rule. 3. Logic, mathematics. A proposition that is assumed without proof for the sake of studying the consequences that follow from it. Please understand this. This is the world that we've been given. This is a philosophical construct. When you research the history, you will find that these are all made up philosophical constraints. This is not real. All the ancient civilizations believed in a flat and stationary earth. The Egyptians, the Indians, Chinese, Mayans, etc. all had a flat earth cosmology. They all observed the earth to be a flat and motionless plane with the heavenly bodies moving above them. They all predicted the heavenly phenomena such as eclipses, equinoxes, to a very precise accuracy. There is also evidence that they had advanced mathematics as they have built complex structures and buildings. They observed the stars above them to navigate to distant lands. So let us begin with Pythagoras of Samos. He is credited with making the first assumption that the earth was a sphere. This article is from uh, the University of uh, St Andrews in Scotland and it's interesting that they say we have nothing of Pythagoras' writing. So how does anybody know what he said or his theories if it's not written down? It is interesting that the second par paragraph begins with We do have details of Pythagoras' life from early biographies which use important original sources yet are written by authors who attribute divine powers to him and whose aim was to present him as a godlike figure. It is very interesting to note that uh, Pythagoras went to Egypt in 535 BC and the article says that he had many discussions with priests, the Egyptian priests, and it's quite clear that he learned a lot about their religion. It is also very interesting that um, Persian king invaded Egypt and took Pythagoras to Babylon as a prisoner. So it's easy to assume that he also learned of the Babylonian practices. It is clear that they practice witchcraft and the dark arts. This paragraph is very interesting. Pythagoras founded a philosophical and religious school in Croton, on the east of the heel of southern Italy, that had many followers. Pythagoras was the head of the society with an inner circle of followers known as Mathematicoi. The Mathematicoi lived permanently with the society had no personal possessions and were vegetarians. They were taught by Pythagoras himself and obeyed strict rules. The beliefs that Pythagoras held were 1. 
that at its deepest level, reality is mathematical in nature. 2. That philosophy can be used for spiritual purification. 3. That the soul can rise to union with the divine. 4. That certain symbols have a mystical significance. 5. That all brothers of the order should observe strict loyalty and secrecy. So it is very clear that Pythagoras started a secret society and possibly practiced dark arts. I would even go further and say this secret society exists, exists today. Today's heliocentric model was thought up by this man, Nicholas Copernicus. This article says, around 1514, he distributed a little book, not printed, but handwritten, to a few of his friends who knew that he was the author, even though no author is named on the title page. This book, usually called The Little Commentary, set out Copernicus' theory of a universe with the sun at its centre. The Little Commentary is a fascinating document. It contains seven axioms which Copernicus gives, not in the sense that they are self-evident, but in the sense that he will base his conclusions on these axioms and nothing else. What are the axioms? Let us state them. 1. There is no one center in the universe. 2. The Earth's center is not the center of the universe. 3. The center of the universe is near the Sun. 4. The distance from the Earth to the Sun is imperceptible compared with the distance to the stars. 5. The rotation of the Earth accounts for the apparent daily rotation of the stars. 6. The apparent annual cycle of movements of the Sun is caused by the Earth revolving around it. 7. The apparent retrograde motion of the planets is caused by the motion of the Earth from which one observes. In 1539, Copernicus' book De Revolutionibus Obium Celestium was published. In it, he placed the Sun in the middle of the solar system and heliocentricity was born. We are all taught in history that the age of discovery started when Christopher Columbus sailed westward and discovered the Americas. A trade route over land and sea had already been established going eastward towards India and China. The European powers competed for supremacy of the trade routes and for 200 years they fought wars over land and sea. Eventually Britain would emerge as the victor and this fact has quite a significance in our story. In 1660 the Royal Society was formed in Britain by Royal Charter by King Charles II. Its motto was Nullius in Verba, which can be translated as Take Nobody's Word for It. The first royal as astronomer of the Royal Society was John Flamsteed. He catalogued about 3,000 stars. The Royal Society published the, world, the world's first journal dedicated to science. It was called 
philosophical transactions. And these journals had input from Sir Isaac Newton, Edmund Halley, and all the uh, top scientists at the time. One must remember that science at this time was a branch of philosophy. This is very important. Some regard Sir Isaac Newton as a great mathematician and scientist. However, he was primarily a philosopher. He also dabbled in the dark arts, particularly alchemy. In 1687, he published a book entitled Naturalis Principia Mathematica, which can be translated as The, Math the Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. This article says Newton's greatest achievement was his work in physics and celestial mechanics, which culminated in the theory of universal gravitation. By, 19, uh, by 1666, Newton had early versions of his three laws of motion. He had also discovered the law giving the centrifugal force on a body moving uniformly in a circular path. However, he did not have a correct understanding of the mechanics of circular motion. Now what you have to understand here is that there's absolutely no way you can perform any kind of experience, uh, experiment, scientific experiment to prove this. These are all philosophical ideas and thoughts written down in a book. This could never ever be proved. Edmund Halley had already worked with Sir Isaac Newton and John Flamsteed at the Royal Society in London. Later he was appointed as the second Astronomer Royal and he proposed that it was possible to measure the distance to faraway planets by a method known as diurnal method of measurement by parallax. Halley also proposed using the transit of Mercury or even better Venus to determine the distance of the Sun and therefore the scale of the solar system using Kepler's third law. He's also famous for predicting uh, the arrival of comets and there is a comet named after him but we all know that comets do not exist. There is absolutely no evidence for the existence of comets. The diurnal parallax effect states that you can take a measurement of a body that you are observing, for example a planet, from one position and wait a few hours until the Earth has moved along its circular path of the Sun to get a new reading to get a baseline. This is incorrect because the Earth is not moving. So, in conclusion, we are all living in a world constructed through philosophy and philosophical ideas, not by science or experimentation. Please seek truth. The truth is out there. Thank you.